kind of the most iconic RSP on campus, I, I dare I say. The lore behind our RSP is insane. I mean, like, is your RSP gonna be, like, on the wall of the building? Yeah. Hey guys, this is Elijah Vargas from the Gold Soul Podcast. Can you introduce yourselves? Um, my name is Taylor Tolman, and I'm studying international relations and political science. I'm Grace Pond, and I'm studying business intelligence and analytics. How have your guys' classes been going so far this year? Pretty good. I'm lucky that I'm like kind of ahead, so I get to take all business classes, which is fun to kind of dive more into that. Um, but I think I'm going to have to actually start reading the textbooks, which is oh. a lot. <laughs> Yeah, same kind of goes for me. I'm excited to be getting more into like my major classes. I'm taking a lot of poli sci, um, so that's really exciting. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of work, a lot more homework than last year, a lot more studying. But yeah, I definitely see, can feel that. I think, like how you mentioned with reading the textbooks last year, I didn't read like any of them. I think I only really needed one, but I bought all of them. Yeah. It was a waste <laughs> of money. Um, but looking back, I think I had it pretty easy. This year, I feel like I, I have every textbook I'm going to need, and it kind of sucks. I don't yeah, like so. reading. I'm, like, illiterate. <laughs> so um, for you guys' majors, what kind of courses are you guys taking? Um, so right now I'm taking, it's, like, Poli Sci 322, and that's, like, basically it covers American presidency. Um, so that's been really interesting. And then I'm also taking like a required one for my major, which is like a research methods. So we'll be like studying a topic over the whole semester and then writing a research paper about that. That's cool. I want to do poli sci, but you should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm taking kind of like one of every business topic right now, like marketing, finance, accounting, law, uh, management, etc. that kind of stuff. There's like business law. There is business law. It's actually really interesting. It's like the only poli sci esque class uh -huh. that I'll get to take, so it's nice. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't have to take like any law related classes for whatever. Really? I feel like I should. Yeah. I, actually, last year I took a philosophy of law. Yeah. Oh, cool. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling because like you had to read about Socrates and mm. I, they, I would they just trip me up. <laughs> I would just fall asleep. Like oh my I don't gosh. know. I found it interesting, but reading puts me to sleep. <laughs> it's whatever, though. So um, I want to get into your guys' background so people could, could get to know who you guys are. Um, where did both of you guys grow up? I'm from the St. Louis area, Missouri. And then I'm from a suburb of Des Moines in Iowa. Uh, what was your like hometown kind of like? Um, I lived in the suburbs, so it was kind of like... We were close with our neighbors, and like obviously, like I went to church and stuff. So, like I was close with like my church and the people that I saw at church. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of I don't know, like one big family kind of where I lived. I lived in like a really old town. Um, we were the first state capital of Missouri way back uh, when Missouri became a state. Couldn't tell you when that was, um, <laughs> but so yeah, it's just like a really old area. My house is like 150 years old. Um, so yeah, I'm right outside of St. Louis County, but I went to high school in St. Louis County, which is all, where all my friends were from, and they never wanted to come visit me where I lived because it was like the hood to them. Uh, for me, I didn't really know that. It was unsafe. But um, yeah, they're all in the very rich areas, and they like, would not come to my neck of the woods. <laughs> Did you guys both go to public schools or private schools? I went to all girls school. Um, I went to private school, but it was mixed. So. <laughs> Interesting, okay. Um, I, I was just noticing that like a lot of kids that go to Creighton went to private schools like yeah. before. I, know, I, I went to a public school, so like seeing the difference is pretty interesting, especially people that come from like all boys or all girls. Um, the way that they interact with um, the other gender is pretty interesting because they, they... Tell me more. <laughs> I don't know, like... Yeah, you <laughs> It's not that like you guys are awkward or anything. It's just like I don't know. I was say, you guys, what about me? <laughs> you said your school was mixed though. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the it's, all girls. It's girls. girls. <laughs> yeah. Do I? No. It's mostly like what I've noticed is like guys from all guys schools don't really 
have like the the skills to like talk to girls. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's kind of a hot take, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Some of them are like so fratty, but I guess I'm not personally friends with any one went true. to a yeah. all boys, yeah, but like that's true. But I'm then again, I do know like a lot of guys that like they're not that they're not bad with talking to girls. Like my best friend Miguel, a lot of his good friends are girls. So I, I would say like that's probably different. Like there's a lot of really cool guys out there. Mm -hmm. Can you like tell if someone went to public or private school and you like meet them? <laughs> that's a good question. I went I went um, public so. I, n I wasn't around private school kids, so like, I don't think I've been around them enough to be able to tell the difference. I feel like sometimes you can get the vibe, you know? Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd have to, like, imagine them in, like, a school uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or in something a like skirt. that. skirt. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. Yeah, I don't know. So, growing up, what kind of, like, hobbies did you guys have? Um, when I was a kid, I really liked to bake. Um, I didn't really, I loved to read. Um, other than that, I was kind of a born kid. I loved sports. I played a lot. Um, I didn't, like, stick with any of them, but I did gymnastics, so I was a gymnast. Did you have abs as, like, a three-year-old? No. <laughs> Some of them do. It's crazy. Um. Yeah, when I was, like, really young, I was a big theater kid, um, but, yeah, I loved to sing, did, like, voice lessons every week, uh, which is just, like, so not me anymore, so it's weird to think about, um, and then I did, like, a lot of volleyball, which kind of took up all of my time for a long time, um, yeah, also a big reader, that kind of stuff, yeah, I wanted to, like, to cook, but, like, honestly, it's just, like, so much work to plan out and then clean everything that it's, yeah, not my thing. So. Yeah, I definitely get that now, like, I don't... Yeah. I have no desire to cook, yeah. especially when you have Brandeis. Like, yeah, I feel bad. That, like, I have some friends who actually want to meal prep, and then they live in McGloin, so they don't have a kitchen, and I like have a really nice kitchen and stuff that I have not used. Live in McGloin and have a so kitchen. You don't use your kitchen? I use the fridge. Oh. <laughs> in the microwave. Wait, what? Are you on the seven meal plan? No, I'm on the ten. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You don't use your kitchen at all. Not yet. <laughs> One day. Your kitchen. Yeah. I want a kitchen. Um, <laughs> so, both of you guys said that you read when you were younger. Um, what did you guys like to read? Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I loved dystopia. I was gonna say the same I thing. Read, like Hunger Games, Maze Runner. Did you read the I, selection? Yes. That was what got me oh into reading. Those were so good, and also like mysteries. Like, I was a, I love Nancy Drew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. ditto. <laughs> yeah, those were, I remember reading Hunger Games in, like, sixth grade. Oh, so we read, we actually read it as a class, which was pretty That's crazy, awesome. I think. Because, like, this, the material was kind of, like, <laughs> I don't know. Death. <laughs> yeah, like, killing other teenagers yeah. is kind of crazy <laughs> to read as a class. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I heard, um, my middle school one of the books they were allowed to read is like their assigned summer reading was The Summer I Turned Pretty. What? Yeah. That's crazy. It's like a Wattpad book. Like, there's no content. No. I don't know. That's a no for me. That's wild. Um, I enjoyed like Percy Jackson, like no. all of those kind of books. Greek mythology, I was like such a nerd. I love that stuff. Have you watched the like series or whatever? On yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's I good. enjoyed it. Um, it does feel like it's pretty, it's closer to the book than the movies were. The movies yeah. were like, I mean, the movies were good, it's just, it felt a little too different, you know? Yeah, that's valid. Um, so, like, from those books, do you think, like, that you like those kind of movies now, like dystopian movies or, like, stuff like that? Yeah, I think, I definitely do love, like, the Hunger Games movies and, like, like, the Maze Runner series is good. Um, but now I'm, like, I love, like, Hallmark and, like, rom-coms. And just, like, those are so good. They're just classics. Uh, I feel like there's, like, a finite number of, like, good dystopian books and good dystopian movies. Especially movies. That's like, so true. Hunger Games is good. 
the first Divergent was okay. Like, yeah, but there's not a that. ton of quality ones, so, like, I've already seen them all, so, like, I don't really mm-hmm. watch them anymore. If they had more quality ones, I would love that. Um, but, yeah, I'm very into the romance, at least reading-wise now. Movies, I kind of watch literally everything. I've been trying to get more into, like, the classic good ones that, mm-hmm. like, Fight Club. I just watched Fight Club for the oh, first time. Oh, that one's time. good. Um, yeah, and I don't enjoy those movies, like, as much, but, like, I feel smarter after I watch them and more, like, distinguished. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys think about, like, <laughs> like zombie movies? Would you, that's that's dystopian, them. right? No, no. It's not? <laughs> that's apocalypse. Like, that's different. What's the difference between apocalypse? Actually, that's a stupid question. Zombie and, like, <laughs> vampires are, like, a that's whole like other a whole thing. That's, like, a whole different genre. Like, new species? That's stupid. Have you guys seen World War Z? No. It's my favorite zombie movie. It's not good. Other than, can I, can I spoil something? So in the movie, there's, like, this zombie outbreak, of course, and they say there's, like, this one genius who's, like, he's the only hope for mankind is for him to, like, figure it out. So then they're, like, running from zombies, and he literally just, like, trips, and he's holding a gun, and he just shoots himself in the head and dies, like, <laughs> five seconds after getting introduced. And it was, like, that's what? hilarious, because, like, in movies, they never kill the important people. It's always, like, maybe, but, like, it was just such an uneventful way to die, too. Just, hilarious. like, tripped. <laughs> yeah, we watched, last night, me and my friends sat, like, right here, and we watched Velocipaster for the first time. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And it was insane. Wait, was it good? Yeah, I've we heard liked about it. it. I haven't heard of that one. It was... It's like, cause it's like a priest or even, something. I don't even know what happens, cause like, <laughs> the special effects are so bad that like, I don't know what ha- I don't even know what happens. Like the the pastor goes to like China, for whatever reason, and he, I want to say he gets bit or something. Like he touches like a a velociraptor claw, and then he becomes like a. You know, like a werewolf, but like a <laughs> velociraptor. He becomes a velociraptor. Oh, my And he God. can change back and forth, and then, like... Like, at know. will or on accident? I think <laughs> the first time's, like, on accident, and then I, I think, like, by the end of the movie, you can kind of control it, but... Is he, like, a bad person, or is he, like, a good priest? He's a priest. He's a bad, that doesn't he's mean anything. Sir. No, he's a good priest. He's a okay, good, good. <laughs> But, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's so funny because it's one of those movies that's like, it's so bad, it's good. Yeah. Everything about the movie is like bad, but if you follow the story and you can look at it like you're making fun of it, like it's a good movie. Yeah, it's funny. for real. It's enjoyable, I guess. Um, so I want to ask like, I was kind of asking about your childhood and you guys both kind of enjoyed reading books. Um, let's kind of move into like high school. What what would you guys say is your favorite high school memory? I don't know. Do you have one off the top of your head? Uh, I have no idea. Like there's gotta be one. Um, <laughs> what, did I, like, what did I do in high school? Here, I'll take it. Okay. Um, I feel like, like not a lot, but our football team made it to like state a couple years, and so I'd say just like going to like the state games, like we'd go to the University of Northern Iowa, and we'd go watch um, in their dome. And so I'd say just, like, traveling up there with friends, like, making a road trip out of it was one of my top ones. I guess this isn't, like, a specific memory, but my junior year I took AP Physics. Um, <laughs> with That's your top memory. <laughs> and, like, all of my best friends were in that class, but it was, like, a 10-person class. It was very small. So we just had, like, so much fun in that class. And, like, we did a lab every single day, so it was just, like, it was very enjoyable, and our teacher was a goof. Um, so it was just, I don't know, that whole class, like, that's kind of what brought me closer to my friends. Because um, we'd just be together for three hours a day doing physics. And <laughs> I was about to judge you so hard, but yeah. I totally get that. No, I still love physics. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, <laughs> it's like those classes that you don't expect, but, like, yeah. all your friends yeah. are in, and then yeah. you completely bond. Because I had that same thing with my AP Physics junior year. I did not... I wasn't a fan of the teacher, but, like, I had so many of my friends in that class that, like, we made it through. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good. Um, So, yeah, no, I definitely understand that. Um, And with the, with, like, going to state and, like, Mm -hmm. watching, watching your team go to state, I, like, I had, I didn't go down for it, but 
we had a girl on our wrestling team go to state and she won. I don't remember what year. I think that was my junior year or my senior year. And she won state and like they we had like a parade for her and everything oh my gosh. And it was like That's awesome. That was That's pretty so wild. Cool. It was it was pretty fun. So yeah, aside from that I don't think our football team ever <laughs> made that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we like as soon as like our grade came in we like lost like a seven p and so it was like oh that's that's awkward that's that we never win state <laughs> well at least like you made it you guys made it there yeah that's true it was fun to go to the games even yeah we lost the energy is probably crazy yeah like, yeah that's what i miss about high school like everyone was so like if you go to a basketball game or a football game everybody's like enthusiastically for the school like the spirit the school spirit is like crazy yeah you don't feel that at creighton basketball games i haven't been to one that's okay that's thing. on you that yeah that's the only thing i mean like, elijah you should go they're so fun maybe <laughs> the blanks here why don't why don't you go i don't know why i didn't go last year i i most of my friends didn't go. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the only reason. That makes it harder because it's such a long line. Yeah. Yeah. I would need. People. Yeah, I would need my friends to go for me to go. You could like record a podcast in line and like. No. Yeah. No. Impromptu. Oh yeah, you'd be podcast guy you'd again. Do mini segments. <laughs> I'm. I'm not gonna do that. It would be. <laughs> that's so adamant. The the um. Logistics of that would be hard. Hmm. Like would Those I just walk around holding later. a mic? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you could do a tiny mic. <gasps> I don't have one Elijah, of those. Elijah, we're making this happen. Grace and I will be your team. I can be your boom boom person. I prefer I <laughs> prefer <mic>. this <laughs> I prefer this style though, like having having your friends sit down like on a couch around it in a classroom or something and just start talking, you know. Grace and I made it. We're your friends. Yeah. You really think no comment. <laughs> you guys are my friends. Yay! <laughs> um, so moving out of like high school age, I um, why did you guys decide on Creighton? Um, I actually visited Creighton in like sixth grade. Um, not like an official tour. I wasn't like a genius or anything. Um, but like my we came for like spring break or something. Um, my family and I we came here, and so we were like walking around, and so I kind of like planted the seed. And then I, like, eventually toured, and I really liked um, the, like, Jesuit kind of identity of it. Like, I'm, a, I'm Catholic, so that kind of resonated with me. Um, and then I also liked how it was small and, like, had academically, like, challenging classes. Yeah, when I was younger, I had a babysitter who, like, was at Creighton. Um, like, in the summers, she would babysit me. Um, so she went here for her undergrad and for med school because she, like, loved it so much. So that's kind of why I visited. It was the first school I visited, um, summer before junior year. And then I, like, really loved it after that. So I visited, like, six more times because I'm a huge, like, overthinker. Oh, and I just, so like, real. needed to know. And I visited a bunch of other schools. And I liked them, but it was, like, never really as much as Creighton. Um, so, yeah, and I just, like, with the business school, it's so nice. And it's, like, really good programs. And um, my major is a little more rare, so that helped narrow it down a little bit. Um, and yeah, I love the small school. Like, my high school had 80 people in it. My grade school had 19. Um, wow. So it's just like, yeah, I don't think, I don't know what I would have done at, like, a huge school. But, um, yeah, so I really like being able to walk down the mall, and I run into, like, 10 people I know every mm -hmm. time I do that. So, yeah, and a lot of good opportunities here. Yeah, it feels like a big high school for me, because my... <laughs> My, like, my public school, we had, our class was, like, 700 or, like, yeah some, something close to that. So, it, it doesn't feel that much bigger than how high school was. Like, I've run into the same people, and then, I mean, every once in a while, I see someone I don't know, and I'm like, yo, like, who's that guy? Like, hmm. what's up? What's your name? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's, it feels, it feels like everybody's everybody's got like their friend groups and whatever and so like it's interconnected I don't know how to explain it yeah like we all kind of know each other yeah we we may not be the best of friends but like we know who that person is because they're friends with this person who's friends mm -hmm. with that person mm -hmm. and then they're, everything's like interconnected is what I'm saying yeah retweet <laughs> <laughs> I think it's reacts 
free eggs. Yeah. Yeah, eggs. I that... hate that. <laughs> a new rebranding. No. They said it was just a placeholder name, too. They said they were going to really? replace it. They didn't replace it. And then they it. <laughs> didn't. They gave it a variable name. Yeah. A I just realized, like, name. a couple months ago, I realized, like, it was kind of tied in with, like, SpaceX. Does he have, like, another business to, other than Tesla? Like, does he have another business that's something X? Like, Tesla has, like, Model X, right? Like, I don't know. He's oh, he really obsessed. likes his X. Yeah. <laughs> you can't <Googling> it. <laughs> Wait, What's if he name his son? I forgot. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to I was just it was like, it Yeah, okay, so, like, X. Like a Nevada. Nevada. Kai. Kai is a cool name. Huh. Griffin. Saxon, I swear what? there was one. Oh yeah, um the. But they changed that one, I think. I'm not about to watch. Wasn't it just like it. Kyle? <laughs> um, there's there's this one. It's like yeah. X. I forgot how to pronounce it. Yeah. It's spelled like X A E. Yeah. A twelve. And there's like a way of pronouncing it. I don't remember, but it's it's freaking insane. X wait, it's called like X Ash Archangel, I think. What? Something like that. It's how it's, did they get that? But <laughs> like <laughs> the way you pronounce it is different because I think he said it's something like stupid like Ned or something. I don't remember what it was. Ned. Like it's just like some <laughs> short name. Oh, I feel so sorry. I'm the for last kid. person named Ned. Like, do people still name their kids Ned? Ned. Is, is that, that short for something? I was just gonna ask that. Um, what could it be short for? Mm, like, <laughs> do you write Ned on your birth certificate? <laughs> N-E-D. <laughs> what? What was the short for? Ned is a nickname for the name Edward. What? Edmund, Edwin, or Edgar. None of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> that not work. That's not. They're How not does even that close. Work? It's not even close. That's so odd. You can't be Edgar and go by Ned. Ned. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide? No. No. No? Oh. Okay. That sounds familiar, though. It was a Nickelodeon show. It was, like, a little before our time, but they played reruns a lot. A little before our time. Like, Zoe 101. Oh. Yeah. Like Wait, that. did you guys watch the documentary? The Dan Schneider one? Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. What was that called? Quiet on set? Yeah, quite on set. It was pretty good. It wasn't as much about Dan Schneider as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's more about, like, his his whole camp, like, his, like everybody that's with him. Yeah. Like, everybody he hired, even though, like, he shouldn't have hired them. There's clearly, like, red flags. Like. Oh. Yeah. Dang. The, like, two women who had to share a salary it was, like, insane. Like... That was stupid. What? Like, <laughs> they should have... Why did they stay there... I mean, it's like a hard job to find. It's like a yeah, writer true. on a show. It's like a dream job. And then they had enough and they left. And then I think like the one lady that stayed, she was like, I still didn't get paid more. Even though <laughs> the other one left, I should be getting like the whole salary, but I wasn't. Yeah. That's crazy. What the heck? That's so bad. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, I was like, I, I watched that whole thing and then I tried to convince my mom to watch it. I don't know if she ended. Like, my mom watched it it was it was pretty crazy and then who's the guy drake bell drake yeah he got like screwed over it seemed I like i thought it was interesting because like you know a couple of years ago it came out like he abused his girlfriend and he like kind of moved to mexico and like renamed himself to like kind of yeah. hide from those allegations and then now he's like back and like coming forward about all that and it's yeah. just like a really weird situation yeah, it's wild. I don't know. <laughs> and then the stuff with oh, what's her name? Who's the who's the girl yeah. from my Carly? Oh, her. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeanette McCurdy. Yeah, her. She. Oh my gosh, she wrote like a whole book about it, right? I read it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you read it? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, that was a crazy story. From what I've heard, I haven't read it, obviously. Yeah, cause like. Yeah, she never like realized it was bad until like significantly after her mom died so she never even like got that closure with her mom which is crazy mm-hmm. just like the weirdest stuff i don't know some people in like the reviews of the book said it was like funny like and like funny is wild but, but, like that she tells her trauma in a funny way and i'm like there, oh. are, there is not a single funny part in this book i don't i don't know what they were talking about like what are you laughing <laughs> at but ugh, i don't know yeah it's pretty interesting 
So, um, <clears throat> now that like we we talked about like why you guys chose Creighton, I don't know how we ended up like down this road. <laughs> oh my god! We ended up on talking about like Jeanette McCurdy. Oh. <laughs> What's the, I don't even know. Where like, did we get Ned? What was the thought process? You, oh, Elon Musk. X retweet X. Oh yeah. Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, Ned. that's what it was. Okay. Oh. Ned, Edgar. And then, and then you said what? Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> I swear, I do this so much, and I don't know, like, I never know how I end up where I end up. <laughs> yeah. And then, I'm just like, whatever, let's just go to the next question. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, like, so now that you guys are at Creighton, what do you like about Creighton? Yeah, I really like the small school, like, seeing people I know, um, and that you can just, like, run into people, uh, because it's so much work to make plans sometimes, so it's nice to, yeah. like, run into your friends, um, that way, um, yeah, I really enjoy my classes, um, teachers are great, especially in business school, um, it was really easy to get, like, leadership positions in clubs and stuff, like, as a freshman, so I feel, like, really tied in and, like, involved here. Um, it was easy to like find my space really fast, which was definitely important to me. Um, so I'm excited to kind of like do that with the next freshman time. Yeah. yeah, I think I would also agree. Just like the community on campus, I think it's very like special and like almost rare. Like when you're looking at a state school, it's just like I feel like I know a lot more people, and just like the different activities that I'm involved in have helped me to like know a lot of different people in a lot of different places. Um, but yeah, and I also feel like just the things I'm involved in, like you were saying, just like help me feel like I belong on campus. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think like our school is way more welcoming than other schools are because I remember my aunt was telling us about how when they moved my cousin in, um, they just pulled up. She lived like ninth floor at um, Simu. She's going to Simu, I think. Southern... <laughs> South, Southeast. Southeastern yeah. Missouri. SEMO? S- University. SEMO. I don't know. <laughs> Southeast Missouri. University. I have friends at SEMO. Um, are you sure it's SEMO? What's O? MO is Missouri. Oh, maybe. But yeah, there was, <laughs> she was saying that like they moved in on like a really hot day, ninth floor, mm-hmm. and they just found like two random boys that were like sitting on the sidewalk or something, <laughs> and they made them like move her in. Oh my gosh! And that's I'm like, crazy. that sounds crazy. Oh, like, I'm, I'm so happy team. that I'm so yeah. happy that like our freshman year we had people that actually yeah. wanted to do it for us. Absolutely. Was, like, yeah. Well, I don't know if we wanted to do it. Yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, how did they trick us into doing that? Yeah, they were, they were like, this is going to be really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, all three of us did the Welcome Week stuff um, and helped a freshman move in and did, like, all the events for that. And that's how we know each other from the RSP group. Yeah, we do. For <laughs> those that don't know. <laughs> Kind of the most iconic RSP on campus. I, I definitely think so. Yeah. For sure. We took up like the whole graves courtyard. I mean like is your RSP gonna be like on the wall of the building? Yeah, like we might have I don't know, building That's true. or something, but Yeah. <laughs> TBD. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> the lore behind our RSP is insane. It is. It definitely is. I think that definitely contributes to, like, why our group is so close, like... Yeah, I agree. I just feel like, like, we did icebreakers that first day, and they just, like, all kind of clicked, like, right after that. Yeah. Like, yeah. They just kind of, like, found their friends. We did, like, one or two icebreakers, yeah. and then it was, we were supposed to do it for, like, an hour, and then, like, so we did, like, ten minutes of yeah. icebreakers, and they're like, okay, we just want to talk. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was crazy. Just, I like, think that's, like, they should definitely... That should be a part of, like, icebreakers is just letting the freshmen talk. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you you can have, like, one or two so they know each other's names or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, after that, having that, like, conversation is definitely what gets them to be, to, like, that's more of an icebreaker, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like icebreakers can either be, like, really good or, like, 
trauma bonding over how bad the icebreakers are. That's oh, yeah. usually what it is, I think. <laughs> they wanted to do more. Yeah, yeah, they were like, so what are we doing next? Screaming yeah. toes? Oh, God. I'm so glad we did We were like, no, we're not doing screaming toes. <laughs> For those that don't know, screaming toes is like a game where you guys all stand in a circle and then they count like three, two, one, and then you look up. And then if you make eye contact with somebody, you gotta scream as loud as you can. And if you scream quieter than the person that on the other side that's looking at you, then you lose and you're out of the circle. Just scream. scream. I've never had to play it before for anything, mm. thank goodness. But like, I don't understand how that's like, and like I guess it does break the ice because you're like <laughs> screaming at people you just met. But it's like, I really know. Like I feel like the ones we did like. You got to know the people, yeah. which I felt like was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I recommended Duck Duck Goose, and like you guys were like, "What do you mean Duck Duck Goose?" Yeah, like, aren't we? Know the How people? would he? <laughs> Who's fast? I want fast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were okay, like, you guys were like, now. why would they want to do Duck Duck Goose? And then you know the event came, and we oh, were yeah, and... playing Duck Duck <laughs> Goose. I'm like, wow. Right, yeah, we should have practiced. Wow. We should have trained. Yeah. We could have yeah. had. We could have had a montage. Hey, our RSP, <laughs> our RSP was going all out for that Duck Duck Goose. Like I exactly. just like, have like this picture in my mind of like our kids just like diving. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> that was iconic. My hat like flew. Yeah. Off. <laughs> yeah I, think I think my. I think I still have turf burn from it actually. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There were some kids that, like, lost their shoes, I think. Yeah. Because they were, like, trying to run so fast. Yeah. That was funny. What that was that was a fun day, though. That was. That was a long day. Yeah, I didn't was make it to the... Was that all the same day? No. No. I can't remember. They're all together. They all That was the same day as, uh... Wait, the... So, the... The icebreakers was the same day as, like, the ice cream social, I think. Oh... And the, the so. oh yeah, and the barbecue yeah yeah or the picnic the luncheon or whatever hmm. yeah that we set up chairs for like I swear welcome like always like blends together because last yeah. year I don't remember very much it feels like all the same yeah mm-hmm. presentation then, or you're with your RSP yeah exactly I I remember last year when um at the event. I saw one of the sophomores and he was like, after, like we, we had just gotten those like blue, those blue like game game day day shirts. shirts. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I remember one of the sophomores was like, um, after this week, don't, don't wear the shirt again. (laughs) Everyone, everyone is going to know that you're a freshman if you wear the shirt. Do not wear it. I don't think I even brought it with me. Really? Yeah. (laughs) You just left it there? I left it at home, I think. (laughs) I'll wear it to Oops. games. Yeah, but I yeah, wear. like you can I wear it to really games, but like that. if you're walking down Oops. campus, the people are like, "Oh yeah, there's a yeah. freshman over there." Yeah. I have sophomore friends who still wear it. Yeah, I I didn't Maybe. notice that. Nobody told them though. Just showing their pride. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah. Um. So, shoot, what the fuck? I don't even know. <laughs> what did you guys think of Welcome Week? Like, when we went through it, or, like... Yeah, like, like when we went through it. And then well, after that, we can talk about, like, okay, yeah, how yeah. it was with the kids. Um, I think going through Welcome Week, I actually really liked it. I liked... Like, I feel like my RSP was, like, pretty close. Like, not as close as ours. Um, but I feel like my RSP was really close, so it's nice to, like, be with them and, like, make friends through that. But, like, I mean, there were, like, some presentations that I didn't really want to sit through, but, like... Overall, I thought it was fun. I liked all the people that I was with, so that made it a lot better. Yeah, I had a pretty good experience with it, too. I liked, like, I really clicked with some of the people in my RSP, so we just, like, had a lot of fun throughout the rest of the week. Um, And I was lucky that, like, I'm in a special program and they balance it by gender, so my RSP was, like, half and half with, like, girls and boys. I know a lot of business RSPs are, like, Two girls, <laughs> 15 guys. Um, so I was glad it was more balanced. But I genuinely liked pretty much everyone in my RSP. Um, and it was nice to stay busy. Like this year when I moved in, um, it, I was always hoping we had more free time because we were so busy with Welcome Week. But when we did have free time, I was like, I don't know what to do with myself because my yeah. friends aren't here. So yeah, it was nice to like not have to like kind of think about, well, what am I going to do now? Because there's always something. Yeah, I definitely get that. I think my freshman year, like, my RSP was pretty close until 
I would say like after first semester, no, probably, probably until like fall break. I think we were like mm -hmm. really close, and then like after that, it kind of dissipated. Like we didn't really yeah. like talk very much after that. For sure. Yeah. It was like the first quarter, and after that, it's like I think we had, we had two things outside of class, and like outside of what's normally scheduled. I would say I guess. Um, we, we went bowling with the RSP once, oh, and then we had a dinner at the, at our, um, at Dean Brockhoff's house, <laughs> and that was, like, that was awesome, because, like, everyone came. You're, how? What? She, like, hosted you guys? Yeah, she hosted. We, like, You're not all, in Dean's. How do you know the Dean? No, she's not She's Dean, our, though. she was our, um, advisor. She's not a Dean, though, I don't think. I think she's just a doctor. I no, thought you said Dean. She's Dean Brockhoff. Really? Yeah. She's, she's, we're They're, not Dean's fellows. Really we're not Dean's fellows. Yeah. It's just. You just got lucky? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's a secret I, I've Dean. heard people so, say yeah. Dean Brockhoff. That's why I said Dean Brockhoff. I have no idea. What's her name? Lisa. Oh. People, people just call her Lisa. It's her nickname. I don't know. Lisa. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun because like people brought food, um, she cooked for us, and then we oh. had she has like a really big table and we all like sat down and ate like oh, that's awesome. It was like that's lasagna. So sweet. I don't remember what it was like pasta. It was like really good. But yeah, I think after that point, <laughs> we're really close. To home. <laughs> Sadly. Sad. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I can like plan some like thing. Yeah. To, but I feel like. They've already kind of taken over it for us. Yeah, no, right? I, just, I like, like it. Playing volleyball together and like yeah. going to the beach. And I love it when they do stuff together. Like, yeah. I was at the volleyball game on Saturday, and it made me sad. And like, they were sitting in different groups yeah. a little bit. And I was like, I no. know. Like, it's healthy. Yes, please make other friends. But like, yeah. I don't know. But then it was fine because they would just send pictures of each other. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like it's like together. even though they're like yeah. separate, they're still thinking about each other. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Which I think that's pretty cool. Like yeah. I was telling my friends like. As long as, like, these freshmen, as long as they, they're they still, like, close, I'll pull up to whatever events they have. Yeah. As long as they invite us. Do you, oh, you'll get invited. They have to have Trust. a group chat without us, right? Like, <laughs> like at Whoa, RSP one? Don't say that, please. Well, like, well, like, I don't know, I feel like with my RSP, we made, we immediately made a group chat without our peer leaders, too. <laughs> because sometimes you don't want the, like, adults in That's there. That's hilarious. But, like, I think we're just so cool that they don't Yeah, because, like, even. they send everything like in our group chat so yeah like, maybe yeah, they don't like, because i feel like <laughs> if they had another group chat that's what yeah, they would have said it picked. well right now we're we're off contract so they can say whatever they want yeah but oh, i'm like gosh. i kind of wish they had a different one so then i would just know for sure if they send something in our group chat yes we are invited because i'm like i don't want to if they that's didn't to invite us i don't want to be like oh yeah okay. hey guys, i'll get a coffee with you guys yeah <laughs> i think this is a question for mike yeah we gotta ask like, yeah, mike shout out, shout out mike Mike Anderson, will you tell Shalom, us? Shalom, too. Shalom yeah. too. Show us your phone. <laughs> so, what do you guys think is like your favorite part of Welcome Week this year? Lip sync. I would also say lip sync. Oh, they just did like such a great job. We were they robbed. Didn't we were yeah. robbed. But like with my RSP last year, they like there were a few people in my group that like really complained. They always tried to leave and they hated it. Our group, but like they got so into it. Yeah. And like I just love. I think that's what made them like so close. Was that like no one was like complaining about Welcome Week. No one was like dragging the mood down. It was like everyone was just like along for the ride and like willing to you know give it their all, which was. Just made it like a lot better experience for sure. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the key to Welcome Week. I think it's really just not taking yourself so seriously and just mm -hmm. deciding to like, like, we don't have to take lip sync. We don't have to be like, what's the word for it? So we can, like, seriously. Like we don't we don't have to yeah we don't have to take lip sync so seriously but like but let's just did. have fun. They did. I like announced it like right after. You guys remember that? Like, yeah. right after we did Icebreakers, I was like, hey guys, like, there's this thing called Lip Sync. We are Imagine Dragons. We are going to win it. And, like, you're going to you're gonna do it happily. And they yeah. were like, yeah, yeah, we are. And they were, yeah. like, so excited They're so, for it. They're like, yeah. enthusiastic, too. Yeah. yeah. Our group is, like, awesome. They always have energy. Like, not a single That's so one of them true. does it. They're just, yeah. like, always in for it. 
Yeah, like early in the morning, none of them are ever like tired. No. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Unending energy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's crazy to, like, show up on time. Just, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They would, like, show up, like, five minutes early at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it'll change. It'll change very fast. Yeah, literally. At the end there. I yeah. Kinda... It, it, like, the whole vibe's, like, so wholesome. It's crazy. <laughs> like, you know it what I mean, so though? Awesome. Yeah. Like, I don't even think I've heard anyone in our group, like, say anything that was, like, too negative or, like... No, they never say anything... Yeah. In training... Or, like, complain. In training, they, like, warned us, like, they're gonna ask about parties. They're gonna ask about... Yeah, alcohol. exactly. Yeah, they never asked I've been waiting that. for that. Not they a single one. Asked asked asked. Asked. We're <laughs> off contract, and they still haven't asked. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> Who Nobody's told, mentioned... Who told them about the contract? Because they they were, like... We were at our first RSP meeting, and they were like, so you're off contract now, huh? Like, does your contract go? And they were like, so when you're getting your 50 J bucks, I was like, how do you guys know this? Elijah. I've been mentioning it because it's <laughs> funny. It's funny to say. It's so funny. I'm oh, like, guys, I'm going to be off contract next week. <laughs> that's crazy. 50 J bucks is like, just don't pay me then. Like, what? <laughs> 50 J bucks is like nothing. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You can me? use it on bugs. Yeah, right. I mean. Look on the bright I, side. I guess. Positivity. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's. I don't want to say it's like a spit in the face, but it's like, why are you guys even paying us? Like, if it's going to be 50 yeah. bucks, that's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, give me the service For like hours. Almost it's three not weeks. even like minimum wage. I'm not even close. Yeah. It's like poverty. <laughs> Service hours. That was like a, that was less like, than a dollar an hour, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. That's we put way in more less than, than a dollar. An yeah, how many that's hours insane. did we put into that's this? That's like way. So many. That's like way less, cause we moved in early. We trained. Yeah. We started training in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> was that like two eight, hours? Eight oh, hours yeah. of training yeah. in the spring, and then it's that's like funny. a whole week of like, training. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah so much out. more, so much more. It was a lot. You know what? We were along for the ride, though. Yeah. No, I, I definitely enjoyed it, especially when the kids came. Once the kids came, it was like, okay, now, yeah. it's, now it's worth mm-hmm. it. Like, yeah. Because I feel like the whole week of training was just like, when are they going to mm-hmm. show up? Yeah. And then it was like, worth it. Um, so, like, the last thing I want to ask, that, like, regarding our RSP group, I guess, is do you guys have, like, a, a message you want to send to, like, the kids that are listening? Um... <laughs> Shout out RSP. Um, I would just say like, mm, I say just like take it one day at a time, and like, like nothing is too serious. Like, it'll all work itself out. Like everything works out for the better. Like, if if like something, like if something re- not rejects you, but like if someone says no, like it's not a rejection, it's a redirection. Like that's kind of like what I found out in my freshman year. Like not everything is like the end of the world like take your time like enjoy the moment yeah i guess like i mean if we're talking to, are we talking to our rsp specifically yeah we're talking to them okay <laughs> those specific 13 people um i guess i would say like just like no we i don't know if you couldn't tell already we like care about them so yeah. much um yeah. and like genuinely love them so i guess just like you know we are here for you for like the next four years just because contracts over doesn't mean we are um so yeah I mean I guess that would be for everyone too just like you know that like people do genuinely care about you and it's like we actually like want you to reach out and like tell us when you're struggling with something or help you celebrate something like fun too like yeah I don't know there's people here for you college is like very easy to kind of isolate yourself if you don't make the effort to not do that so like yeah reach out yeah. Retweet. Snaps. <laughs> Snaps. <laughs> BBL, Drizzy. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, BBL. <laughs> oh, the iconic things. Yeah. Turtle, giraffe, and, and eagle. That's just, the funniest thing is that, like, ride. Jonah has so many nicknames. Yeah. Jonah's, like, one of our friends. Just Jonah. Jonah. Just Jonah. Did the other ones have any nicknames? Not really. Does like, it? Doesn't Abby call, like, Maddie BBL Drizzy? Like, Madeline? Yeah. Oh, that's her yeah. nickname? Yeah. It's like... 
Yeah, because when we were playing volleyball, she's like, BBL's not here. I'm like, what? <laughs> Who's that? She's like, Who's BBL? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Yeah. I can't oh, think of anybody Jonah. else that has a nickname, though. Jonah just has them all. You're Turtle. Yeah. Yeah. I am Turtle. That was crazy. At closing ceremonies, when they all start chanting Turtle. <laughs> it's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> oh my god. I was surprised they didn't scream something during C survival. Yeah, but I'm happy they didn't, honestly. I was so bad. R.I.P. My role in Sea Survival. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I think... I'm surprised they had it, like, on the first day. Because I remember having Sea Survival, like, two weeks after Welcome Week. And I was like, why did we have to come to this? (laughs) Really? I I think that's how it was, but I don't remember. As somebody who, like, helped produce Sea Survival... (laughs) Like, it was really funny. Yeah. It was just, like... Oh, it's genuinely like, good, yeah. Like, you have to, like, be behind the stage, like, trying not to laugh at something for it to, like, fully settle in. Like, it was, like, so long. And it was, yeah. like, I never, like, want to do it again. But it was, like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, it was such a good experience. I loved it. And just, like, you met so many people. Yeah. And then the there kids, like, they you. were, like, can I get your autograph? No After way. I was done, I said, <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty fun. And then we, and then after that, we made them to our uh, lip sync practice. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, they were, and, and they the, were enthusiastic about yeah, it. Yeah, the other group wasn't very happy. Though. No, they weren't. They were so mad that they were there. That's okay though. Some of those kids are good on that other the other group. I think. Yeah, I love. Them. I actually like see those kids because yeah. they're business kids. Um, yeah. I only know like one of their names. I know, um, I wish we knew their names more. Yeah, yeah we never like introduced ourselves. Yeah. I'm just gonna assume. I just kinda yelled name. at them to yeah. the dance moves. But I saw a lot of them at Scott shut down and I would like drag them oh, over yeah. to my club's table and say, Hey, you're gonna sign up for this. Um and a few <laughs> so of them you're, did. What's your net ID? <laughs> what's your net ID? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still see like Arjun every every once in a while. Oh, he's so iconic. Yeah, he's my favorite. Oh, shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other RSP is good. They had good guys. Yeah. Hey, girls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guys Our guys, like, I swear, so how many dancers did we have? Like, we had so that, like, dance before. I mean, like, five from ours alone. Yeah, right? Or, like, gymnastics or... Cheerleading and yeah, dance yeah. and stuff. We should have won. I know. We should have won. Yeah. Insert clip of our lip sync. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Maybe. so good. I actually rewatched it today. I was going yeah. through my really? camera roll, the lady stuff, and I was mm. like... Ripped off. For real. Yeah. Wait, did you delete it? Or... No. Oh, you kept oh it. my gosh. Okay. That's in my favorites folder. Yeah. <laughs> I would never delete that. Yeah, I showed the video of my of our RSP to my parents over FaceTime. Um, and then there's like a lot of screaming throughout the entire thing. They're like, oh my god, whoever was screaming, like, I bet their throat freaking hurts. And I'm like, yeah, that was me. And I'm like, um, yeah, like I that did not sound like you. And I'm like, I know. I remember waking up the next morning and I was oh like, "Oh my god, yeah, I can't speak." <laughs> I felt bad because like the whole time I was watching, I was like making sure it was all in frame because mm-hmm. I've recorded mm-hmm. stuff and had it like, like go like that. <laughs> the bottom of the stage. Yeah, and then like so the whole time I was making sure I had it all in frame, and I feel like I missed out on the experience mm-hmm. because of that. Like, I wish I had like a tripod or something. <laughs> oh my god! Should have brought the whole setup. Yeah, yeah I don't know, like. I, but, like, they, from what I saw from my phone, it looked like they did really good. They did so good. Like, yeah. everything was just really perfect. Yeah, nailed so it. I don't know how they, like, timed the, the beat drops and all of that. No, like, yeah. So perfectly. Like, it was, like, kind of shaky during practice, and then, like, they got yeah. up there and they did it. We did it with three it. practices, right? Three or three. four? Yeah. Like, maybe three. Wait, yeah, it was three. Which is crazy. Yeah, they put that together. With only three is crazy. And, like, the first two, they were still putting it, they were still, like, making different parts of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And even in the last one, we were like, okay, you, you guys are going to Yeah, we still, don't, we still didn't have all of it done. We still needed the last eight seconds. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I wish I could go back to that practice. That practice is so good. Like, me running, like, the claps. Oh, yeah. As they, like, practice walking on. <laughs> that was on. so funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that one was good. good. I'm... I feel like lip sync is like so I don't want to say iconic but like no, it is. it's it's definitely like the probably the best event cuz yeah 
it embodies like what Creighton is. Like, yeah. I, like I just, the community like, and like yeah. I don't know. Like I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm gonna t- <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do it next year. Like I feel like I'm gonna miss it. Like it's crazy. Yeah. You can go watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could. In like a sorority or frat or anything. Yeah, but then it's like I don't have anybody You can go see Like it. what's the word? I don't you have any skin that. in the game. Like there's no I don't have a dog in the fight, you know. I mean maybe one of our Just freshmen is gonna be a yeah. PLG. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. It'd be weird if like none of them were. No, no, I hope they, I hope so they many of them have been like, I want to do this. Oh, really? Year. Yeah, yeah. So I did a good job, guys. That's good. Hmm. Yeah, my, my RSP last year, I think there was only like maybe four or five people that didn't yeah. become. I feel like PhDs. the majority of mine did. Mm. Yeah, like half of mine did. Yeah, like a lot of mine. Um, but that's, that's good to see. Um, I want to get to like my, my like other questions. Cause I mean, we were talking about like, your backgrounds and then choosing Creighton and then finally like talking about like RSP um like looking towards the future what would you say like excites you <laughs> about my specific future or just the future let's do both oh no that's worse oh, okay no. <laughs> she said that's worse uh my specific future I'm just like really excited to see where I end up uh, location and career wise um, I want to do consulting which is in a lot of like big cities and I'm hoping to go east coast so but that's like I don't know kind of crazy for me to like go that far away from home so I'm just excited to see how that shakes out on uh, what my life looks like as a real adult um, <laughs> uh, yeah and see where I go from there um, I don't know about the like general future I'm ex- well we can answer that you can answer that like after okay. she responds you go you go um, you kind of took my answer. I just feel oh. like, I don't know. I feel like when I'm going into, like, international relations, I can kind of do, like, a lot in a lot of different places. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I'm just excited to see where, like, I end up, like, with my job. Um, and just, like, the people that I'll meet and, like, kind of all of that. It's just, like, a lot of unknowns and, like, they can be scary, but, like, I feel like it's not. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really exciting for me. What do you just do like, with that? Like, do you become, like, a UN or something? Yeah, that's Become like, the UN. <laughs> yeah, I am the UN, actually. That's, like, my dream job is to work for yeah. the UN um, or, like, as a diplomat. But more realistically, um, I'd probably work for, like, a private company um, doing, like, international trade or, like, oh, agreements okay. or things like that. Or um, you can also work for, like, the government. Yeah, so. like a diplomat or something? hmm Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, you can do a lot with it, actually. Um, so what, what, like, broadly speaking, excites you guys about the future? Whether it's, like... The whole future. Whether it's, like, technology Mm -hmm. or, like, other stuff. I can go with that. Yeah. So, back when I used to read dystopian books, there was this... (laughs) There was this one called... Great start. Grace is excited for the Hunger Games. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) There's this book, uh, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, but, um, I always call it Scythe. It might be Scythe. 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 I've heard oh my of gosh, it. I've read that. Yes, I don't um, remember it, but... <laughs> but basically, it's like where this um, super smart AI kind of like runs the world, and it basically solves all the problems, so humans like don't have to like work anymore, and there's no problems in the world, basically. And it was like, you know, dystopian, so it was like, that's not good. But um, I think, you know, like, we're, AI is going to like help with a lot of stuff. Um, and I think, I mean, there's definitely going to be growing pains, um, like there are whenever there is like a huge technological innovation. Um, but I think it is going to take away a lot of like jobs that people kind of hate, like the monotonous, just like boring mm-hmm. stuff and hopefully like solve some problems. Um, cause like, I don't know, we have so much knowledge, but it's hard to like put it all together and combine it. Cause only, like one person can only know, like have so much knowledge on their own so like having AI be able to pull from like everyone's knowledge source could hopefully solve like a lot of problems that we find unsolvable right now so I think that's gonna be really exciting to see how like AI changes our like throughout our lives because it, it, I think they said it is like the biggest innovation in like a really long time where it's like crazy to live through it yeah I think that's a really good one I think <laughs> that like kind of going off of that one I'm excited to see like where technology takes us like in the medical field Mm -hmm. um just because I feel like when those like breakthroughs happen it's like really big 
like, I don't know, like, obviously they're researching, like, cancer and things like that, and so I think I'm just really excited to see, like, life-changing, like, cures and, like, medicines come out that can truly, like, help people and, like, change our world. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how much of, like, an impact breakthroughs in medicine have, because, like, every time I feel like, because back then, um, our lifespan was so much shorter, mm-hmm. and then now it's, like, we can live to be, like, what, what's, like, the average lifespan? What, like, 85, maybe? 80 for yeah. a woman, 75 for a man. Okay. Go woman. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> womp, womp. But, yeah, no, I can definitely see, like, in the future, I've heard people say that we can, like, our generation might live the longest, like, mm one like over a hundred most likely that's crazy which i think it's like cr- that's that's like wild but at the same time i've also heard people say that our generation ages like the fastest out of like mm. all of them and we look the oldest even though we're like the youngest <laughs> you know that's what I mean? crazy interesting like there's this video of this guy um oh, what's his name i don't know his name but like he's the guy that on tiktok and like instagram who who would just, like, um, give you, like, recipes from different, uh, restaurants. He'll be like, this is the mm. secret. This is this, this is how you make the sauce from canes or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know that guy? So, he's actually in our generation. He's Gen Z. But he looks like he's, like, 30. <laughs> <laughs> he looks a lot older. That's crazy. But it's crazy that, like, people our age can look so old, yet, like, they're our age, you know? Um, well, I so I you wonder something if, you want to tell us, do we look old? No, <laughs> I'm just saying like, I wonder if we're actually going to live long or if like all the things that we've consumed, like in our lives, whether it's like media, television, stuff like that, or like the food that we've eaten, mm-hmm. that's not maybe the best for us. If it's actually like to our detriment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, how, like, with, like, the whole, like, Red 40. Yeah. Did you guys, like, hear about that? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, like, really toxic, and it can, like, cause cancer. Oh, great. But it's just, like, it's, like, a dye that's in, like, mm-hmm. Doritos and, like, Cheetos, like, M&M's. It's it makes just, things like, red. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, like, when you go abroad, like, they don't have those things. Right. Because it's, just, like, toxic. We really, like, don't even have a choice to, like, avoid that stuff anymore, though, because, like, they modify the like base ingredients too is like that's a whole field of like jobs that you can do is like changing like the seeds and like work changing like the genetics of plants so it's like the plants we have and they're always like treated with so many chemicals and like they put the wax on them and make them shiny and look mm-hmm. prettier and stuff and it's like so we like even if you wanted to eat like actual normal food I guess you just have to grow it all yourself which yeah. is not gonna happen yeah yeah it's pretty sad though because like I feel like um I wonder I wonder if, like, your business perspective would have, like, anything to say about this, but, like, um, I <laughs> feel like the ca- the fact that, like, it's, it's so, like, capitalistic that, like, we're, we're willing to put, um, money before health mm-hmm. is, like, we're willing to make so much money just because, like, the food tastes good, you know yeah. what I mean? As opposed to, like, we, we definitely shouldn't be eating that just because, like, we could get cancer or we could die sooner and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I feel like usually, I mean, consumers can usually kind of like, I basically like vote with your dollars on like if a company starts to use those kind of things that you could like kind of turn away from that. But like, it just like has such a stronghold already that it's like we, everyone yeah. does it. So how are we supposed to decide to not do it? Or it's like, same thing with like when they switch to plastics. I guess it's just because like the research isn't out when they start to make that change. And it makes them more money, so they're like, why not? Um, but and then it just gets too late to kind of reverse it. But yeah, I can't imagine ever doing that as a business person. Like, I ran my school's coffee shop, and I just can't imagine like ever being like, yeah, I'll just like, I don't know, put some chemicals in this coffee. They'll like, <laughs> they'll sell more. Like, no one needs to know. On the side. Yeah, I can't. Like, I just can't imagine doing that. It's yeah, I don't get how people get so caught up in that kind of stuff where it's like. How much does it really affect their salary at the end of the day, though, too? Yeah. Like, you individually, like, well, 
And it's yeah. also like just cutting corners because sometimes it's cheaper to use like high flu- high fructose corn syrup in this when like maybe the more expensive option is what is better for people yeah. to eat, you know? Um, have you guys seen like those those like newer videos of um, people eating like watermelon and it's like rubbery? I've like heard it of bends. it. No. It like bends. It looks what? so gross. Yeah, my mom talks about it. Like other fruits too, like a yeah. banana that's like, ro- yeah, it's like. Oh yeah. I don't know. Hell no! Like <laughs> I, no, <laughs> it's gross, and that I don't know. I feel like sometimes that brandeis like <laughs> you kind of question. I mean, I know it's like Sodexo, like it's. It's like prison food, but. <laughs> is that actually what they use at prisons? I bet they do. Oh, that's what I heard, yeah. Really? That would make okay. sense. That's one crazy. of my friends, so one of my friends is like, he does criminal justice as well, and um, we did a trip to um, one of the prisons, and he said that he saw a Sodexo truck outside. That's crazy. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, I guess you could probably look it up, like. Yeah, we're all Sodexo. But, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that, yeah, it's like, it's prison food, basically. But, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, like, sometimes, like, when you're eating the food, you're like, is this, like, the best food? Like, I've had yeah. some of the worst apples I've had in my life. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and, like, the chicken, you're like, yo, like. This, yeah, this, chick- this chicken's kind of kind of weird. So weird, especially the chicken sandwiches. Like, mm. I don't know, it doesn't really look like chicken. It looks like a McNugget. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I did hear about like the eggs and certain other foods that they serve, um, at prisons, I guess. I don't know ent- entirely like if this is true, but I heard someone say that at at the prisons they'll give them like the eggs or whatever because um it'll make them have to use the bathroom so they won't like riot and stuff. What? Cuz you know how people <laughs> how say that, that like the eggs at Brandeis make them have to like take a shit. I see that on Fizz constantly. I have never had that experience. Like I haven't either, but like I've heard of it happening and I'm like I'm wondering if that's if that rumor is actually true. Cuz it's probably it's probably not, but like it's wild to think about that like it's the same exact food that they're serving like people in prison. Hmm. Hmm. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> um how the heck did we get there? I don't know. Oh, you're talking about food. Scary in the future, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I guess this is kind of like a question that goes off like the dystopian thing. Um, would you, do you think that like what we're living right now is like a simulation? Like, are we in the Matrix kind of thing? Yeah, I guess so. I don't think so. I think we're in real life. Yeah, I don't think so, but I don't think it really matters if we are. Like, because if it still feels real to us, then it's, like, real enough, right? Yeah. It, it's, like, like we, we just have to make the most of it, I guess, right? Well, like, what's the difference between, like, if this was a simulation, like, what's the difference between this and, like, the real world? Don't look at me when you say that. I feel like I'm in a simulation. (laughs) Uh, Have you guys seen the movie Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds? So good. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so it's like that where it's like, well, it's basically about like a video game and the coding is so good that these characters basically become autonomous and they like think they feel pain and they think like they're real and stuff. So it's like, then it's like the ethical dilemma of like, well, can you delete the game? Like, and Hmm. because you're basically like, yeah, can you, like, kill off these characters and not, even though it's not real life, like, it's real to them. So it's like, well, what is real? What's, you know, like, yeah. what's the oh difference? Gosh. Yeah, it makes your brain that hurt. That's, head. like, all of philosophy was just, like, is this real? Is it not? Like, I don't know. But, like, to me, it just doesn't really matter if it's real or not. Because um, it feels real, and that's, I think feeling real is what makes it real. I guess so, yeah. Because, I mean, <laughs> I feel like most movies make, with the exception of, like, probably the matrix 
Like, if you look at Free Guy, it's so, like, obviously a simulation. It's so obviously a game. Because the characters don't have much depth with the exception of just him. Right. But, like, even him, like, he, he goes to his closet and it's all the same shirt. It's like Emmett from the Lego movie. Like, there's no, there's no depth. He's just, like, the same guy. He goes to the same coffee shop every day. He says hi. And then he leaves. And then he goes to his job at, like, the bank or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's... You know it's a... It's a simulation. Like, mm-hmm. you know it's not real. But I wonder if, like, in real life, if it was a simulation, like, the complexity of it would be insane. That, like, you can feel certain things. You... I don't know. Do you know what I'm... Like, I'm, mm-hmm. what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yeah, for real. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, like, how complex this game would be that, like, we can do all that we do. And yeah. And, like, you can feel sensations. NPCs. and Like, we're the NPCs and we do all this. Yeah. Like, I just, I feel like it has to be real. Like, there's, like, <laughs> no other option. Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, I think that's one of the things that makes it makes me sure that it's probably real because if probably because <laughs> you can't really say for sure right like right i guess so but like yeah i think it's it's like having those having like feeling having like other things it's like you, you kind of get a good good sense that it's probably real Go ponder this for a while. Um. So, questioning reality. I guess one of the things that like I think about when I'm thinking about that is like dreams because dreams can be. When you're in a dream, it feels real, and it's. I don't know. Like, do you guys have any like crazy dreams that you kind of question if it's real or if like you had a crazy experience? Hmm. I guess, like, this is a little different, but once, I mean, sometimes I feel like I have psychic dreams, and then they, like, happen, which is, like, the truth. You don't? No. Like, like it predicts the future? Yeah. Um, And usually, like, I don't, (laughs) usually I don't remember it until it's, like, happening. I'm like, oh, yeah, I told, I remember dreaming it, like, a a couple weeks ago, like, I remember this, like, happening. Um, But I remember once there was time that I actually remembered it before it happened, and it was, like, I had this dream that in grade school, I, like, we were playing kickball, but we were combined with the boys' class, and usually PE was, like, single gender at my school, so I thought, like, you know, not real. And then this one guy kicked, this specific guy kicked the ball to the right, and then my friend, who's really athletic, ran the base and then got out. And so it's, like, you know, like, nothing dreams. They're not, like, predicting COVID. But um, but then, so that happened. So I was with my friend, and then, like, all of a sudden, that, like, same kick happened, and it made me remember my dream. So I was like, oh, don't go. You're going to get out. Like, just trust me. But then she went anyway, and she got out, and I was like, Oh, that's crazy. What? That's crazy. What? That's. Yeah. So I just like wish I could remember more, cause like most of my dreams don't ever happen. Um. So I, it's not like I know like oh that's a prophecy. But, so it's like but, but yeah, it's just it's weird and it's like how does that, how does that work? Yeah. Okay, your turn. <laughs> I hope my dreams don't come true because mine are like random like the other night like somebody got bit by a piranha like yeah where did that come from like I've never seen a piranha in my life like yeah it's just like random stuff that happened in my dreams and then like I have like a notes app I showed them earlier of like all all my dreams I just like if I wake up and I remember it I like write it down and there's like always like specific people in my dreams and it's like I don't know it's just so weird all my dreams are weird yeah, I definitely get that. I hope that, like, none of my dreams are <laughs> ever yeah. become... Like, I've had a few, like, wild ones that are kind of fun. But, like, <laughs> I I have a lot of... Especially the ones that I remember are usually, like, really dark. Oh. Like, oh, ex- like really... And that's the reason why I remember them. And I almost... Yeah, that's I almost true, enjoy though. them. They're I almost enjoy them because they're memorable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if they were all, like, bland and, like nothing happens and like I won't remember them I forget them pretty quickly but like other dreams that are I guess kind of scary like I'm like yes like I finally had like a good dream like it's kind of like a movie you know yeah for real sometimes I'll wake up and I like miss it because I'm like that should be a real show and now like I want to watch it but it doesn't exist I'm like I need to get to the end 
Do you guys ever lucid dream? I've always wanted to. Mm-hmm. I like do sometimes like if I wake up and then I'm like going and then I kind of fall back asleep after my alarm like I'm like in like a half dream state and usually it's just more like I know I'm dreaming which I guess is also kind of lucid dreaming but like there's been a couple times where I could like change it I was like oh yeah I'm dreaming I can just like once I was like backed into a fight and like I was fighting someone I'm like oh shoot they're gonna kill me and then I was like wait just like give yourself a gun so I gave myself a gun oh my gosh <laughs> there That's you go. so that was fun I never yeah. like know that I'm dreaming or like mm-hmm think that it's like real life like sometimes I'll like wake up from dreams but it's like like I feel like as soon as I wake up like I know it's not like a thing sometimes it can make you feel like like crap throughout the whole day though that's so true yeah sometimes I have like a bad dream and it's just like yeah (laughs) stupid yeah and I remember like last night I had a dream and I don't remember what I said but I said something like crazy and it was like, there was like a group of people and I said it and everybody looked at me and then they were like, whoa. And then, and then like later I woke up and then this, this morning I'm like, whoa, I'm so happy that was just a dream. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so happy. Like it would have been over. <laughs> hey, Elijah. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. I, I, don't, I have no idea what I said, but it was like, it was crazy. And But yeah, do you guys have dreams that you're like, well, thank God, like that wasn't, that wasn't real. Yeah. All the ones that I die in, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've never died in a dream, but like, really? there have been ones where like people in my family have died and I'm like, I wake mm-hmm. up the next morning and I like text them automatically. I'm like, I love you. Yeah. Like, hope you're doing well. Hope your day's good. Yeah. Don't yeah. get in any I get cars. those too. <laughs> I've had a few of those. Those are scary. Yeah. I, I had those. one that was like so realistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, like, sometimes you just, like, wake up from them, like, your heart is, like, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had one for, like, I had one for my mom and one for my dad. Same. They were, like, super realistic. Really? That was so bad, yeah. Damn. Yeah. It's rough, but, like, it makes you appreciative, too, Mm because you're, like, like, thankful for your parents, you know? Yeah. But yeah, That's crazy. I'm gonna go text those me. are the only those are the only ones that like I'm like nah like I didn't I didn't need to have that dream. Like, yeah. Yeah. Where the <sighs> stupid. Like I don't enjoy those ones. Mhm. I've enjoyed a lot of like really scary other ones, but not those. Like I've had dreams where I've died, and I kind of enjoyed those. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but like, it's. Like, the storyline leading up was so interesting, and then me dying, and then, like, <laughs> sometimes, like, after, it. sometimes, like, after I die in a dream, like, I'll go to, like, I'll be a ghost, or, like, I'll be in heaven, or I'll be in hell, or it's, like, it's just always, like, different <laughs> oh, things happening. It's interesting. Crazy. That is so interesting. For whatever reason, when, when I die in a dream, like, I never, like, wake up. Huh. That's so interesting. Usually. My dreams are always just obscure. Yeah. Like, the other night, I, like, stole something from a school. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What'd you steal? It was, like, a like a sculpture, but, like, you would, like, hang it on the wall. I don't really know. Interesting. Like, nothing about my dreams are, like, real. Like, yeah. I just think I know what it is, but it's probably not right. what it was. Yeah. Um... One of the things, like, I've heard about with lucid dreaming, I guess you could probably answer because you've gone lucid a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, She's gone lucid. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard that, like, if you look in the mirror or, like, if you look at your hand or, like, if mm-hmm. you try to take... Have you, have you guys noticed that, like, none of your dreams you have your phone? Mm, no, I've That's never true. noticed that. But, yeah, if you, try, if you try to, like, look at your phone, you can't, like... For whatever reason, you can't, like, comprehend. Or, like, if you look in the mm. mirror, you can't, like, visualize what you, you would look like in your dream. That's so That's crazy. crazy. Sometimes it can throw you into a nightmare. Huh. I, like, I don't mess with that dream, so it I, like, me. read about ways where you can, like, try to lucid dream and stuff. Um, like, different techniques. And yeah, I actually, I think one of them is you look at your hand. One of them is, like... Like, touching your hand, because if you're awake, then you, like, really feel it, but if you're asleep, then you, like, you can, you see it happening, but you don't feel yeah. it. 
But then I read that um, lucid dreaming can like lead to sleep paralysis, and I really don't want to do that. So I'm like, have no. you had that? No. It's terrifying. Sound- have you had have it? Had it? Oh I've had it god. several times. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. And you don't even get the lucid dreams to like go with it. I know. It's... Womp womp. But like, <laughs> I had it one time. I was asleep, obviously. And then like I wake up and I see my mom come in to my room. It's like really dark. I don't know how I saw her come in. But I, I saw her like walk in. She was like standing over me. She like whispered something. <laughs> what? And I, like I couldn't hear her because like I was paralyzed, right? And I couldn't move, I couldn't move my lips. And I was just like heavy breathing. And then like she walks out and I'm like, like, I'm trying to think like, I'm like, what did she say? I don't know what she said. And then that next morning, like I go ask my mom, like, what did what'd you say last night? Why'd you come into my room? And she's like, I never came into your room. What? <laughs> Cause I was, I was paralyzed. I like hallucinated her coming in. Are you sure you were awake though? That's what sleep paralysis is. You're like between awake and asleep, so you start like it's almost like a dream state. You you like hallucinate. Mm. I thought it was like you wake up and you like, but your body's still asleep, yeah, so you, you can't you, move. I think it's I think it's you wake up during REM. So like oh. during REMs, your REM, your body's like paralyzed. Yeah. You're you're still in rapid eye movement, but you can't move. That's so that sounds weird. horrifying. Yeah. So I, no that happened to me once, and that was like, I remember asking my mom, and it like freaked her out, because she had no idea, and I was like, what, like, why were you in my room? What, what, what were you trying to say to me? I couldn't, I didn't know what you said. I couldn't make out what she said, but it's like terrifying, because you're, mm. you're just stuck, and yeah. you actually cannot move a muscle. That's so weird. But yeah. Yuck. Um, did I already ask, like, what's the craziest dream you guys have had? I don't, I think. I'm trying to think. I feel like my, like, piranha one the other night was crazy. <laughs> that was like, the somebody just got, like, I don't remember the context of anything, but, like, somebody got bit by a piranha. And I, like, I think I was, like, the doctor or something. What? <laughs> I was just, like, not fitting at all. Like, don't put me in an emergency situation where I have to, like, help somebody who's hurt. But, yeah. Probably that one. I was like, where did the piranha come from? Yeah. Like, specifically that. Yeah, I don't really remember any. Oh, I guess um, once I was, like, in Branson, Missouri. Hot vacation spot for the locals. Um, <laughs> and, but that was, like, the night that, like, I don't know if you guys heard, they're like, you know the duck boats that like drive on land and then can drive into the water? I think I know what you're talking about. So we used to like do those every year and we'd go down to Branson, but then two of them like dr- capsized that night and like a bunch of people died. Um, so that night, it was just like weird because I was there and I was like playing in that water earlier that day. So that night I went back to my hotel and then like my friend was staying up later because it was our last night there, so she was packing, but I went to bed. So then she told me, like, as soon as she got into bed, all of a sudden I, like, stood on our bed and started banging on the ceiling. Um, and it was, scre- it was just screaming, help, um, like, over and over again. So she was freaking out. Um, but, yeah, I remember, I remember I was, they say, like, sleepwalking and talking, like, usually has nothing to do with your dream. But I remember my dream was, like, I was in a death boat and I was drowning. And then I was, like, all, I was just, like, stuck in there. And I was, like, trying to, like, get out, but I, I couldn't. And then I remember someone being, like, it's okay, it's okay. And then, like... So then I just kind of gave up and drowned. And then, but that was my friend. <laughs> but what? so my friend had like gotten up on the bed with me and was like, it's okay, like lay that down. And like just got me back in bed. And then I was oh like, my goodness. And that was that. But I'm like, that'd be terrifying as my friend. But yeah, I don't know that I do that anymore. That's crazy. I think it happens more when like you travel. Yeah, Because you're, you're not used to like the same familiar. bed. Yeah. yeah. But. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done anything that crazy before. Or once I had a whole conversation with my parents when I was asleep. Because um, I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I had to go to the bathroom, but then it, as soon as my feet hit the floor to stand up, I fell back asleep somehow. Um, and then I walked down to their room and they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, I want to go carve pumpkins. And they're like, uh, can we do that in the morning? <laughs> and then I was like, no, Allie's going to beat me in the competition. 
Um, and then I like woke up and I was like, what? The <laughs> That's crazy. Was I talking? <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I was like responding to what they were like saying to me. So I'm like, that's, I don't know, that's so weird. That's interesting. I wonder if like, like part of your brain was like responding. That's so weird. I don't know how that works. Yeah, like, I don't know. I want to like record me sleeping now because like, what if I still do it? How would, how would I know? Yeah. I just saw a video about like, um, it's two like conjoined twins. They're like conjoined by like the yeah. top of their head. Sounds horrible. And it's not, it's actually pretty interesting because they were like, they would close one of their eyes. So like one twin would like close their eyes and the other one would be looking. The mom would like hold up a number like three, four, whatever. And the other twin would be able to answer. Um, you're holding four. So do, both do of their eyes are... brain? They share a... They sh so they each have... T they both have a brain, but, like, part of their brain is connected at one oh. point. And so That's I guess so they're crazy. able to send signals between Do they have 360 them. vision? That would be interesting. I don't How know. would that oh, yeah, play out? Sense. It's not 360 vision. It's more like one person can see it and it's sen sending signals across one brain to the other brain. Right, so mm. both of their, if both of their eyes are open. That's crazy. I don't know. That is an That's interesting crazy. thought, but it could be like a thought, like I'm thinking two and it goes to the other side. Mm. It doesn't mean like that person can see what you're saying, but I wonder mm. if that could be actually be true. I wonder if that is. Yeah. It could be, but like, I was just thinking about that when you were talking. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It, but like, no, nah, I shouldn't say that. It's messed up. <laughs> it it looks like the oh like I couldn't imagine being conjoined. It no. looks it looks like like so hard, like, especially how they are. Like they're like, no, that yeah, that's no. mean. I shouldn't say Cause that. Because like only one person can walk forward. Then you don't have to walk backwards. No, all they the time. can both walk forward. It's kind of actually they're kind of like this. That's mm. so, it's so interesting, though, to, like, think about. Yeah. Because like, they have, like, almost a superpower. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know. I'm an only child, so I really like my independence and getting, like, to <laughs> pick what I do and when I do it and, like, always having to, like, consult another person. Like, you can, yeah. That's crazy. Like, talk to them. Yeah. Like, ugh. Like, you're not no even, privacy like, just ever. friends. Like, you have to do the same thing. Yeah. And, like, you have to, like, that's crazy. Yeah. But I find I think I thought that story was like pretty interesting. What if you hate your conjoined twin? What if they <laughs> suck? You can't. You can't. You're stuck with what them for What if your life. conjoined twin is a serial killer? Oh, well then I guess you're you, also. You would have to also. Be what if you like try to fight them and you can't? What if you're okay? Sometimes you're not equally like you don't have equal body parts. You know, sometimes one person has like way less. You know, yeah. like what if you like can't mm -hmm. control stuff but you're still there? Yeah. Sounds like a case study. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that sounds that was, like when people have like multiple personalities and one's like mm. a really bad person and one's like good and they have to like figure out. That's also interesting too. Like all the psych stuff. Yeah. Just so cool. Makes me think of like so many what if situations. You know my favorite fact about like people with multiple personalities? They never sleep. Yeah, and they don't, and they just think that they sleep. Yeah, like they, they think don't that know they what sleep. the other one is doing. Fight club. Yeah, it's exactly so like Fight Club. It's so yeah. weird. Every time they wake up, or every time they go to sleep, another personality wakes up. Yeah. Okay, so um, I I, I want to wrap this up with like any any like life advice you guys have. I know you gave some advice about like um. To to our RSP, but like to the broader audience, everybody that's listening, if you have any advice, whether it's like life or uh, just advice in general. I think my advice is just like lean on the people around you like they're here to help you and like you don't have to do anything alone like you always have somebody supporting you even if it doesn't feel like it um and also just to like live in the moment like that's kind of like my like my new year's resolution this year was to live in the moment um because like you find beauty in the moment and that's like I don't know the moment is where like everything happens and so like if you're living too far in the future or too far in the past then like you miss the moment and all the beauty that can happen there yeah I like that um 
I don't know, one quote that I really like that's kind of my advice is, um, like, you're not finding yourself, you're creating yourself. So I think sometimes it can be, like, you kind of feel like you kind of lack some freedom in who you are and what you do. It can feel like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that you're supposed to do or, like, I don't know, you just get trapped in how, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it at all, actually. But um, I think it's really important to remember, like, the freedom that you have over your life and that, like, when you're not happy about something, like, there are things you can do. It's just more uncomfortable to, like, kind of exert that effort sometimes. But, um, yeah, I think just remembering that, like, you, every moment makes up your life and, like, I don't know, not to wait for that, like, someday when things are gonna kind of be what you want it to be, that, like, I don't know, every, yeah, I don't know. That's a terrible yeah. way to say all that. No, no I, get it. <laughs> I definitely get it. And I think both of yours kind of play hand in hand because mm-hmm. if you're, if you're just, like, waiting for, to become, like, who you're supposed to be, um, nothing's going to happen. But you also got to, like, enjoy the moment, live in it, and, and like, make the most of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to do a quick summary of, like, when we went over. So we started, like, you know, talking about our classes. That was, like, the intro. Um, and we talked about, like, your childhood growing up. Both of you like to read books, um, went to public schools. And then we talked about high school, like, favorite memories. Um and stuff like that, and then we talked about, like, choosing Creighton, and, um, what it's like living on campus, um, and then how both of you guys kind of, like, the class size, like, the size of the school, and then I think somewhere in between there, we went off on a tangent about, like, um, Ned, yeah, Ned. <laughs> and then, like, Nickelodeon or something, <laughs> Elon Musk, yeah. and then we eventually started talking about, like, Welcome Week, and, um, like, our RSP group, and, like, how they're close, and all of that, and then we kind of finished, like, talking about, like, what the future is going to be like with, I guess, food, (laughs) (laughs) food and AI, and then (laughs) we wrapped it up with uh, dreams, so I think, especially, like, with the content that we talked about, I think it was very interesting, people can definitely learn, um, and also be entertained by... The different stories we told, the different dreams we had, and stuff like that. So I want to thank both of you guys for getting on. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. So fun. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Goal Soul Podcast. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to drop a like. And if you plan on listening to any future episodes, make sure to subscribe and click that notification button.